Hello everyone and welcome to my review of Star Trek IV The Voyage Home. So yes, uh, it's been a while since my last review so I thought I'd uh, bring uh, bring in uh, another Star Trek review. And uh, yeah, today we're going to be looking at the fourth movie, The Voyage Home. So, the storyline is um, that basically there is an alien probe in uh, space that's causing a lot of uh, distress and is about to destroy the galaxy. So the Kirk and his team um, obviously have to go against protocols again. They are stranded on Vulcan after the, after the, the end of the third movie um, and they, <coughs> they have to go back in time to retrieve uh, two humpback whales. <laughs> With, who um, somehow can communicate with this probe and get it to um, move away and to basically that's it to save the Earth and yeah that's Star Trek Four. Um, as you can tell, it's quite a basic story. Well, no, not basic. Well, yeah, it is, but um, yeah, Star Trek Four. Um, I mean, it's very different. That's the first thing you can say. It's very different to the uh, the first three films. Um, it's just bizarre. It's just bizarre. I mean, <laughs> in a good way. In a good way, it's bizarre. But um, you just kind of like before I sat down to watch this, I looked at the plot synopsis and I thought, okay, this doesn't seem right. And then when I watched the film, I was like, huh? Like whales, <laughs> um, humpback whales <laughs> in a Star Trek film. I mean, it's ludicrous, but you know. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, well, let's put it in this context. The best way you can say is that at least they're not taking this film seriously. Otherwise, that plot, the, the plot, would send this film down the toilet. And it is just a strange plot. I mean, I, first of all, I don't really understand how the humpback whales can actually uh, communicate with uh, this satellite or alien probe or whatever it is um, <clears throat> it's um, it's quite strange um, but uh, they, they are playing this film with more of a lighter tone so it does work um, and Leonard Nimoy directs this film funnily enough um, as well as being in it as well um, and this film is quite different because of the time travel aspect they, um, the team will head back to the 1980s so the best parts of the film uh, for me were enjoying seeing them interact in the 80s. Um, that was great fun. Um, my favourite scene of the film would have to be that hospital scene when they have to rescue Chekhov. I mean, it's just nothing that you'd expect in a Star Trek film. It's just so outlandish, but it surprisingly worked. It made, had me I had a smile on my face. I mean, at the end of the day, you, you, you could just have a laugh with this film. You can just have a laugh. Um, I think the production design is, is is nice. I mean, it's a nice change. I, I think. I mean, it's um, it's not not what what you would expect in a Star Trek film, but it's a nice change from what we've been used to in the first three movies, which were kind of darker and more serious. Um, <clears throat> so it's nice to have one that sort of plays to a more lighter tone. I wouldn't say it's necessarily comedic because I didn't necessarily laugh at many of the jokes. I had a couple of laughs, um, but. I don't think it's like hilarious laugh out loud. Um, if there are laughs, there are few of them. Uh, but I think the lighter tone does work, and I'm happy about that. And I, I like the storyline with the whales. Surprisingly, it it kind of works. I mean, <laughs> you wouldn't think it would, but um, I think it helps uh, with the one of the new the new female character, Gillian. Her name is um, who's a whale biologist, um, and she's like a tour guide for. Sea World or wherever it is that they go to to see the whales, um, and uh, you can see she kind of gets thrown into all this, um, and she uh, offers her assistance as well because she knows about the whales and she knows how they are and how they essentially their anatomy and how how they've evolved. Um, so that's a great source of benefit for the team, and she has a nice little. Um, I suppose you could say with Kirk um, it's not, it doesn't really develop into a romance but they have dinner together uh, well, a brief dinner and um, 
she 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 wants to help, and you know I like her character. She's um, a very strong-willed character, and her emotional um, attachment to the whales is something to behold. And that's uh, that's something that you wouldn't expect in a Star Trek film. Uh, and I, I really like that about it. And it, it just gave it just gave the film a lot more realism because obviously Star Trek is like a sci-fi fantasy. Um, so it's nice they they've brought it down to earth, and they've brought some real emotions out of this. I mean, it's not anything that'll make you cry or anything, but I'm just saying it's uh, as a character motivation, it is perfect, and she kind of cements the emotional um, side of the plot um, with her connection to the whales, and um, you know that that does um, that does help with you kind of caring about her and the other characters. I also think this film has a nice. Um, you know, this is where the team kind of, so far, out of the ones I've seen, where the team bond the most, um, which is great because obviously everybody has their different jobs and everyone in different stations. And um, um, the previous ones have always been sort of more personal. This is more about everybody, about the whole team, and it works. Um, <clears throat> I like that. I found it quite funny when Spock is um, trying to uh, understand the sort of slang. Well, the the, the new kind of language of the of the 80s um, is not very familiar to him and when he jumps into the tank to try and uh, help the whale it's <laughs> that's quite uh, funny it's, it's funny seeing how um, all those people interact in the 80s and you know, that's kind of the <laughs> the most um, the most fun of the film um, really and uh, <clears throat> The music is nice. Um, there's not much of it, but when it's there, it's really nice, and um, you can care about it. Uh, you, well, not can care about the music, but you you can um, you can see it's more it's appealing more towards a lighter tone. Um, I think all of the visual effects and CGI for the time, well, not CGI, all the visual effects for the time work really well, um, and it does look consistent with the other films, even though for most of the film they are in the 80s on Earth, um, which is still great. I mean, there's a, there's quite an intense scene towards the end when their, uh, their vessel, well, their sort of submarine vessel thing crashes, um, and they have to get everybody out. That's quite intense. Um, I think the direction by Leonard Nimoy is, um, I mean, it's quite bizarre when you think about it compared to the previous films, but, uh, I think it actually works in his favour this time. It's a nice deviation, even though the plot is, well, weird and strange. <laughs> it kind of works. It's actually kind of cute, if uh, if that's appropriate to say. It's kind of cute, <laughs> and um, it's much more enjoyable than the third movie, I think, uh, which was just a drag. Um, it's just simple. It's just back to basics, and you know they make full use of that and. Um, I like William Shatner as Kirk. I think um, his acting is great. I, I have to say, um, all the acting from all the cast are great here. I mean, the main team, obviously. I mean, Spock, again, Leonard Nimoy does a great job as Spock. Um, I mean, it's, it's his part. It's his part. I mean, he owns the role. I mean, we'll get to Zachary Quinto later on. Um, <clears throat> you have uh, all the others, like Michelle Nichols as Ahura. She's good. She doesn't get as much uh, to do, but she is good. Um, Bones, DeForest Kelly, he's he's good. He's 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 good, and he provides some nice comedy as well. As particularly in the hospital scene when he gives uh, that woman who has um, who's on dialysis uh, when he gives her the tablet and something, and then later on we cut to her and she's like, "Oh yeah, he, he saved me, he saved me." <laughs> I love that. That's uh, that's very um, that's very funny. Um, you've also got Scotty. He's good. He's got some nice comedy as well. Um, yeah, and Chekhov as well. Chekhov gets quite a bit to do. Um, when he's being interrogated. Um, that's quite a good scene. Um, the only thing is, I mean, I'm not really uh, sure because I've only seen this film once, so I'm, this might have breezed over me. But I didn't feel there's like a main antagonist. Uh, I think it's just sort of the humans, <laughs> the, the humans in the 80s, and all the security people. Um, there's not really a main antagonist, um, but I, I suppose that they wanted to you know, just deviate from the same formula from the first three films, so, you know, whatever works. Um, 
at the end of the day, uh, what I really admire is that this film has a great fun sensibility about it and um, doesn't take itself too seriously. It allows, it knows what it is, and it allows itself to have fun, which is kind of the downside of the third movie is that it, that it, um, it was too serious and too dark. It just kind of, and the, the plot wasn't really that strong, and uh, it just, I don't know, I. I just thought, I mean, with the death of Spock in the second one, and then with the death of David in the third one, it was a bit too much. So I suppose it's nice to not have anyone die in this film. You know, it's nice to have people live. And um, I like at the end, uh, the ending is nice when uh, when when they have that ceremony, um, and you know, and then afterwards, Kirk celebrating, and then Gillian gives him a kiss, and this is oh, see on the other side of the galaxy. I thought that was great. Um, there's also some really good camera work in this film as well. I mean, it's it, it's much different, obviously, because it's there's um, they're on, they're on Earth, so the camera is allowed to kind of um, move quite a bit more. Um, because it, usually it would have been just shots, um, mid shots, planning shots within this, within the interior um, control room of the ship, and uh, all wide shots of uh, ships flying around, uh, yeah, so it's nice to have a few varied shots, um, as, as a, you know, a technical person, it's just nice to see the deviation in that, and the variation, um, but, yeah, that's, that's really it, I don't have much more to say about Star Trek 4, I think it's good, it's an improvement, um, I mean, it's a bit corny, uh, you know, when they all jump in the water but you know by that point I was I'd accepted the tone of the film and it was great um, I don't think it's brilliant or anything uh, I do think my only sort of bugbear is that yes the story is a bit strange uh, with the whales and I think the first 20 to 30 minutes were a bit slow I think it took its time to get going but once they got to Earth it started to pick up and it, I was, became a bit more interested because it was something different that I didn't expect so yeah only a few bugbears um, and uh, I just I don't think it has the dramatic storytelling that the others do but that's because of the change in tone uh, they're just going for a different sort of feel but I don't think it's perfect I think it's a good decent film it's good fun so I'm going to give this one a 7 out of 10 my review of Star Trek 4 The Voyage Home. What do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Put your comments down below and let me know. Tune in next time when I review Star Trek 5 The Final Frontier, but um, live long and prosper for now. I can't do the, the, the hand symbol. I'm not going to do that. So um, thank you all for watching, and as always, I'm Mr. Tardis 11.